With the clocks going forward this weekend and daffodils at last coming into bloom, well, there are plenty of telltale signs of spring. <laughs> Another is the sight of hares. The fields are full of them at the moment, although there has been a serious decline in their numbers since the war. Our reporter Malcolm Robertson has been trying to catch up with them, and that is no easy task. It's that time of year when you might just come across the Mad March Hare. Capable of speeds of more than 40 miles an hour, this normally rather shy animal puts on a bit of a show. A show captured spectacularly by wildlife photographer David Tipling. We recently saw what he could do with roosting rooks. Now the focus of his attention is the brown hare. He discovered these slugging it out in North Norfolk. For Tim Strudwick from the RSPB, a healthy population of hares is encouraging. Their young are an important food source for birds like the marsh harrier, and to see them boxing is always a fascinating sight. It's all part of the social behaviour, and it's been a little bit of a mystery, I think, I think and various interpretations have been made, but I think now it's, it's believed to be... Largely, it's just it's kind of aggressive behaviour. It's, it's, it's either two, two, two males um, um, arguing or, or a female and male arguing, particularly at this time of year. The males are keen to mate and sometimes the females aren't quite ready. Since the war, the number of brown hares has been steadily declining, from around 1.5 million to the present estimate of 800,000 nationwide. It's believed there are around a quarter of a million in the eastern counties, where the decline has been less marked because the amount of arable land provides a good natural habitat. A female hare can produce as many as four litters a year. Each litter could contain three or more young, known as leverets. With a very acute sense of hearing, they're always aware of potential danger. I can actually see 24 hares in this field, but the problem we've got filming them is that they obviously feel under threat, and it being such a big field, they love being in the middle. Now, as to why there are fewer numbers than there used to be, modern agriculture clearly is less conducive to hares than traditional farming methods. People still shoot them. Despite it being outlawed, hare coursing is still a problem. And foxes also kill huge numbers of young leverets. David Tipling's handiwork is on show at this gallery in Holt. He's currently away on a photographic assignment, but his partner told me about the lengths he goes to to get the perfect image. After a lot of patients going there every, every evening for, you know, for several days, actually I think it was weeks in this particular subject, the hares, um, he was very, he was very um, lucky as his hard work and dedication paid off. Roger Draycott's been carrying out research into hares and their habitat. Together we went in search of them on this farm at Wickenbrook in Suffolk. We saw several. They nibble away at cereals, hedges and tree shoots, but there aren't enough of them here to be a problem. Some farms do have hare shoots each year, but that's only really when the hares are at a very high density, when they're considered to be um, causing damage to crops. I would say they're loved by farmers. I mean, they're seen as being really as being part of the countryside, and most farms love to see hares to see hares about. And uh, the majority of farms now have gone into agro-environment schemes, and the hares are really benefiting from that. You might never get to see them as close as this, but look in the field when you're next passing. You'd be amazed at what might spring up. Malcolm Robertson, Anglia News. I'd really like to see that. It's interesting to know that it's the male and females that are arguing well, most. Well, sometimes, and they're not so different in, uh, into humans about what they argue about either, <laughs> are they? Now, have you ever had a pet goldfish that's got to a certain age and, how shall I put this, headed off to the big fishbowl in the sky? Delicately put. Well, a couple from Water Beach near Cambridge say their goldfish has had a miraculous recovery after they thought it had died. And what's more, they say he also survived for more than seven hours out of his bowl. Stuart Leafs has the full story. It may seem that all is well in Mr Fish's watery world, but his owners say he's come back from the brink after he was found floating lifelessly in his bowl at home in Waterbeach near Cambridge and was then wrapped in tissue paper and put in an empty bath for what they say was more than seven hours. Dara said, oh, you ought to bury the fish now. So about half two, I picked it up to take it outside in the garden and it just flipped its tail and it started moving in my hand. But when it first moved, I thought it was just like a static shock from Carol when she picked it up and just made the muscle spasm or mm. something. But then it started showing a bit of life and then we stuck it in the sink. 
These pictures show Mr. Fish shortly after his recovery. You can see he's still struggling to stay upright. Here in the Marine Department of the British Antarctic Survey near Cambridge, they were able to offer a possible explanation. If this fish was ill or it had had a shock and that had made its metabolic rate very low before it was taken out of the tank, then it's quite possible it could survive quite a long time out of the water and in some wet tissue in the bottom of a bath, especially if it's cold. So it's not the case that uh, you know someone's bought you another substitute no. to stop you being upset. <laughs> no. No. no, definitely, it didn't didn't leave the house basically. <laughs> so he knows what it means to be a Mr. Fish out of water. Perhaps he did reach the aquatic equivalent of the pearly gates, and someone decided it wasn't his time. Stuart Leith's Anglia News, Water Beach. It's nice to see Mr. Fish is happy and well now. Isn't it's it? a fantastic story. It's I can't incredible. believe it. You can't just give it seven hours, but apparently it happens. You just have to shock him. It's a miracle fish. It's How do you shock a fish? <laughs> it's a question that has kept <laughs> me awake many a long night. <laughs> now our news hour continues after us in just a few minutes. Here's what to expect from Alistair Stewart. So that's all coming up. What's coming up with the weather over the weekend? Do we get an extra hour in bed or an extra? I think we don't. Oh, don't no, we lose an hour, don't we? So, so we, one less hour of weather. Here's Rachel with the details. <laughs> So, OK, with those clocks, we don't really lose an hour of weather. We'll just be in bed <laughs> during that hour. And looking at that weather forecast... We understood you. Don't worry. We thanks. still love you, David. Thank you. Have a lovely weekend. See you next week. Good night. Bye.